What makes an economy grow? It seems that most people have the notion that the inner workings of an economy are impossibly complicated, too difficult for the average person to understand. Well, while it is true that an economy is complex in terms of how many different things are simultaneously interacting in it, the economic principles that apply to those interactions are actually pretty easy to understand. Let's start with a simple economy. Suppose there's a village of five people. A butcher, a cutler, a stonemason, a blacksmith, and a miner. And suppose the butcher starts with $100 and the other four are flat broke. Well, one day as he's trimming some meat, the butcher notices his knives are starting to dull and wear out. And he asks the cutler to make him a new set for his $100. The cutler agrees and starts working. As the cutler is sharpening the blades, he notices his grindstone is starting to crack, and so he asks the stonemason to make him a new one for the $100. So he gives it to the stonemason, and the stonemason agrees and gets to work. Now, as he's chiseling away, he realizes he could use a new chisel. So the blacksmith offers to make him one for $100. Now before the blacksmith can get to work on the chisel, he has to refill his supply of iron ore. So he asks the miner to get him another ton for the hundred dollars. Now the miner works all day, and in the evening he decides he could use a good meal after his long day of hard work. So he drops the iron ore off at the blacksmith, and then swings by the butcher where he buys $100 worth of steak. So the blacksmith then makes the chisel for the mason, the mason finishes making the stone for the cutler, who finishes making the knives for the butcher. Now notice, the hundred dollars is back in the hands of the butcher, and everyone else, again, has no cash. Now on the surface, it would appear that the economy is exactly the size that it was. After all, there's still only a hundred dollars cash in it. But the butcher has a new set of knives. The cutler a new grindstone. The mason a new chisel. The blacksmith has the remainder of the ore, and the miner has some delicious steaks. So while the total number of physical dollars has remained the same, the economy has grown in value. See, true economic growth only comes when value is added to the economy. Growth does not come from simply putting more money into it. Suppose, for example, that everyone suddenly received a big pile of money. Well, pretty soon no one would want money as much because everyone has plenty of it. Inevitably, people would have to offer more money to trade. And at that point, prices and wages have both risen together. Only the numbers will have changed. The actual value has not. See, the only reason we use money is for its convenience. You may not want what the other guy offers, so he pays you in money. And we use that money as sort of an IOU passed from person to person. You'll pass it on to the next guy whenever you find something you do want. In fact, you can feasibly envision an economy where there is no actual currency, where people simply trade product for product. In a village. So I gathered those chickens, Angie. Fishing for an empty bottle, Lunk? Not in this life, lady. Just the bottle for the chickens, like we agreed. Later, in a drugstore. You know, if you bring me some mushrooms, I can take that empty bottle and fill it with a blue potion! Say what? An economy such as this would still be able to grow, despite there being no currency in it, because it's the value from the trade that grows it. 
After all, this economy didn't grow from the money being passed around, it grew from the products that people created. It grew when the cutler made the knives for the butcher. It grew when the mason made the stone for the cutler. It grew when the blacksmith made a chisel for the mason. It grew when the miner dug up the ore for the blacksmith. And finally, it grew when the butcher made the delicious steaks for the miner. Now because this trading of products and services is what grows an economy, the way to improve an economy is to have more avenues of trade opened up, rather than to be restricted to what politicians and bureaucrats believe is best for you. It's not complicated. The easier it is to employ someone, the more employment there's going to be, and hence the more economic growth there's going to be. And it's important to note that even though all politicians sincerely claim to know what's best for us and to have our best interests at heart, many of them are only thinking of 